We talked yesterday about the origin of the XPRIZE Foundation. And so I, I read this book, The Spirit of St. Louis, which Greg Marinette gives me, and come up with this crazy harebrained idea about, uh, about this space flight competition. And of course, the very first thing that any entrepreneur has to do when you come up with your great idea is raise money. And so I have on my bookshelves these Penguin pocketbook science fiction books. And I'm reading them, and in the back, there's this one-page tear-out that says, if you'd like to fly on a future flight to the moon, Mars, you know, Jupiter, Neptune, Pluto, you know, without disregard to gravitational issues or so, please fill out this form and send it in. And send it in where? Well, to the Hayden Planetarium. And so it hits me, oh my God, the Hayden Planetarium must have you know, millions of these forms of people interested in private space flight. And so I'm gonna go track them down. And so I end up on your doorstep. Just to be clear, th that solicitation wasn't just a few years ago. It was many, many, many decades ago. I think it dated back to the 1950s. It did. And, I, and I'm pretty sure it was just a stunt <laughs> that the Hayden Planet was not gonna launch people to Pluto. All right, so, but you were right in thinking that if you were gonna have a core group of people, if they're still alive, a core group of people who are thinking this way, then you wanna link up with them in some, in any way you can. So I show up, um, Dr. Tyson, a pleasure to meet you. My name is Peter, I've got this you know, idea for the Space Flight Prize, and by the way, would you be willing to share the names and addresses of all the individuals who have signed up? Because <laughs> I wanna hit them up for money. And I'm thinking, crazy man alert, right? Okay, let me just humor him. Maybe he'll go away. Okay. I never told you that, right? No. <laughs> but I think what you do, don't, I, in all fairness to those thoughts that I had, to do what you're doing requires a little bit of crazy. Yeah. You can't just be normal and do any of this. So that's a compliment. Yeah, I resemble, I resemble those remarks. Um, so uh, you bring out this shoebox, and, um, and there are these tear outs, and I'm amazed you had these shoeboxes, and you then go on to explain to me that the probability these people actually still live there and are still alive is like diminishingly low. Yeah, these are addresses that predate zip codes, okay? So that's how you know. Well, um, so at least. Oh, by the way, just because as an educator, who here is under 40? Okay, don't clap yet. Uh, <laughs> you have no idea that the word zip is an acronym. I told you, see? <laughs> okay, zip stands for Zone Improvement Plan. Whoa. To help mail get to its destination faster. So now you 40, 40 year olds and younger can feel like. I, I think it was, it was, it had to get rolled in, so it was like late 60s, I think, early 70s, or even, even early 60s, oh. because you are 100 years old, sir. <laughs> 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 I was the first zip code. <laughs> uh, so that began, that began our, our friendship and relationship.